Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to talk about well we're going to return to a subject I've covered before the idea of real-time data collection or real-time process control. I've been having a, a little debate with somebody on LinkedIn about real-time SPC and the person was recommending some electronic data collection and I said well why don't you use a pencil and a piece of paper because um, it's the cheapest thing it never breaks down always works and you started today. Now training needed, now electronic gizmos needed, now electricity needed it just works and he said ah yes but SPC on a piece of paper isn't real time. I said to him, no SPC is real time, however you collect it. So I want to address the idea of real time SPC. And as part of this, uh, Cornelio sent me, um, he sent me a link to a, to a website that uh, they're recommending, it's almost like an app, you collect the SPC data on your phone, which potentially is a great thing, don't get me wrong, it's, it's got lots of potential. Um, but what I would say is, get into SPC by hand first, get used to it, learn to use it, then if you think you use loads of time doing it, maybe electronic might be the way forward. But it's, it certainly isn't going to do this. So don't buy it because you think it's real time. Because there's no such thing as real time SPC. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain why. Um, I went to the software, by the way, and I'm, I'm just going to read one of the things it says. It says it's talking about conclusions about using software. It says, pencil and paper data collection makes it impossible to provide real time feedback to the operators. All we have is after the fact compound data okay so um, now by the way first thing about that is he said all we have is after the fact compound data if all you do is write data down that's a very bad habit to get into never look at numbers they are useless so the minute an operator clicks a data point they plot it on a graph that's a given anything else is stupidity all right so so the, it shouldn't be data, it should be information because it's on a graph. But, but anyway, let's talk about the real time element of that phrase. So I, when we were discussing this, the idea of the, of the seven SPC rules, the, um, the Western Electric rules came up and what one of the things that Cornelio was saying was, well, an operator can only apply one rule, which is that you're outside the limits. So if I just, if I just put a Let's put a chart up. So you got the upper control limit, lower control limit. Just to be clear, by the way, these are not specification limits. Specification limits have no place on an SPC chart. So please make sure you keep spe specs away from this diagram. Okay, and of course there's the there's the average that we've got. So. There's our process, and of course, what Cornelio is saying is, well, there are there are seven there are seven rules. One of them is that you you cross the red lines. All right, so so rule one, point outside, and of course, for an operator, that's dead easy. It's it's a it's a single data point and bang. Okay, now then, let's talk about the idea of real time. All right, for a second. So I'm going to do this for each for each. Uh, rule okay so real time now this one of course it it happens instantly all right so you take the data point and, and you get an instant signal and the operator now has to do something they have to take some action so that's real time isn't it no 
because it isn't real time. The previous data point was taken some time ago. Now you choose these intervals, all right? So people ask me, how often should I take data for an SPC chart? It depends how often you think spurious problems will appear on your process. So if you don't think that you will get too many noisy situations and, and variability will play into your process for let's say two hours, these data points could be collected every hour. All right, so, so hour one, you collected some data. Hour two, you collected some data. And every hour, you collect some data. And what the data point is making a judgment about is the previous hour. So if this data point had been inside, our judgment is for the last hour, your process has been producing what it always produces. When you do SPC, you take a picture. The picture looks like that. And providing you don't break these rules, what you're saying is we assume that picture is, th this is always an assumption. There is no real time about any SPC. It's always using, it's using knowledge and data that you collected days ago. So if you start talking about things being real time, it's a complete misunderstanding of, of the depth and the meaning of statistical process control. You take a picture and you say, the extremities of the picture, that's my lower control limit, that's my upper control limit, yeah, and you place them on the chart. And whilst you adhere to the rules, you are assuming that that works. But when this data point tells you otherwise, this could have been happening for the last 45 minutes. This data point obviously was just taken now but it isn't real time in terms of telling you you've got a problem. It's never real time. Even the instantaneous date, the point of that signal. But there's other signals, of course. What's the next one? Seven points above average. Okay, now, how long did it take you to get these data points? So what we're talking about now, of course, So the process has moved. And of course, look, these, these results here, which of course would be outside this thing up here, this is still quite a rare result. You know, if you look at this zone here, this is still quite a rare result. So it doesn't say that every time you collect a data point, you're gonna get bing, you're gonna get the real time uh, data point telling you you got a problem. So now, seven data points, when you collect these data points every seven hours, so seven hours ago, this thing shifted and you got the signal after seven hours. It, it don't matter whether we're filling out on a piece of paper or we're filling out electronically. This is just not real time. Uh, and to, 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 for me to buy software on the basis that somehow this is gonna be better, that, that's not a good reason to buy the software. If you save bucket loads of time and you can, you can multi-man the machines maybe and things like that, and you can still maintain the quality. That might be a good reason to buy the software. But this is plain stupidity, it just, it just doesn't exist. What else have we got? Um, seven points increasing or decreasing. Okay, so, this sort of thing. Process, process goes for a walk. It's doing this again. How long does it take you to get this piece of information? Well, it takes you seven hours. All right, uh, what else we got? Uh, next one. Two out of three in zone A or beyond. So one of the things that I haven't done, but um, you should do on a control chart, is, is split it up into six in order to apply these rules. And the zone at the top here, that's a zone A, and the zone at the bottom, so the two extreme zones are, are zone A's. And it says two out of three, and it's in the same zone. So in other words, I've got um, like this. 
So these three, look, two out of three are in zone A. What it's telling you is, it's, it's another sign that the process has gone for a walk, but of course, how long did it take you to get this, this signal? Well, it took you three hours. It took you three hours, eventually, to get the signal. So for three hours, your process, potentially, has been making crap and you didn't know it. For three hours, your process has been screaming for help and you didn't know it. There is no such thing as real time. Okay, what's the next one? Four out of five in zone B or beyond. So there the next zone's in. So A and then B's the next one in and of course C is the big blob in the middle there. So now we're in we're in this top we're in this top third essentially. And we got we got four out of five of our data points. How long does it take to get this signal? Well, potentially, it takes you five hours to get this signal again. It's another one of these situations. The process is, is going for a walk. Um, what else have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Um, the next one, 14 points. Alternate, up, down. So the process goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Yeah, so, and it alternates up and down for 14 points. How long does it take you to get that data? 14 hours it takes you to get that signal. Um, and the last one is 14 points are all in zone C. So suddenly, you get all of that. Now that one's gonna take you 14 hours as well, but of course that's a sign your process is getting better. So, hey, it don't matter. We don't have to, we don't have to sweat that one. Um, but the other six, the other six are never real time. The, you know, if that's just happened two minutes ago and you collect that data point, fair enough, you've got a real time signal. But how often do you collect the data? And don't forget, the better you get at this, so if, you, if you've used SPC, think about this, and think about spending money on software. If you've used SPC and you're brilliant at it, how often should these intervals be? Well, maybe you start it off with intervals one every 15 minutes, because you didn't trust the process. But then you used SPC brilliantly, maybe just a piece of paper and a pencil, because this is the power of the piece of paper and the pencil. You could save bucket loads of cash for no money. SPC is free money. No software needed, no nonsense needed, get a pencil out and plot a graph to start off with. You will learn so much and you'll make bucket loads of cash. SPC is free money. So what happens is this free money comes to you as you get better. Well, of course you start to go, well, I don't really need to do once every 15 minutes. Well, I do once every 30. And then you, you know, you, you see some symptoms still within a 30 minute window and you go, what are, what are those bloody things? Can we get rid of them? Of course you work and you, you work to get rid of those. They start going, well, I'm not seeing a symptom for every two hours. And you go, okay, we'll go for a one hour window. And then you do some more work because you, you get those symptoms. Because let's be honest, you know, symptoms four times a day is still too much. So you do some more fantastic work. What are you doing? You're, you're working harder and harder to get rid of this. You're working hot, so you've spent money on software, then you work as hard as you can to, to waste that money. That's what you're doing when you do quality improvement, when you spend money on it, when you spend software on it. Yeah? You're buying software that you don't intend to ever use. Why would you do that? And you get even better. You take data points once every two hours. You get even better once every four hours. I've got a piece of paper and once every four hours I'm going, and I'm sticking a data point on it. I can't imagine that I'd really need, you know, anything electronic to do that. That's my point. Number one, SPC is never real time. It is never real time. It, it can't, it can't be because you're sampling out of the process. You're sampling. And by the way, even if you were checking every single one, let's think about that, because I know some people, they do measure every single data point. Look at this here where the process moved. Look at the overlap zone. Look at all this. 
So even though the green distribution has shifted to the blue distribution, doesn't mean the data will give you a signal straight away. No, it doesn't. There's an awful lot of flipping overlap here. There's still a chance that, bang, you'll get a data point that looks, that looks pretty okay on your graph. That's why all of these rules exist, because this one, getting one out here, this can be quite a rare thing if the process hasn't moved that much. So of course we've got to have the others, these sorts of things, these, th this one, these two. Shewitt, Shewitt used to use this one. Shewitt loved this one, and he loved that one. They were the only two that Shewitt ever used, by the way. Um, but you know, what, what's he doing? What, what he's doing is he's saying, I recognize the limitation of this signal. So I'm putting in some more subtle mechanisms. But I appreciate that that subtle mechanism is gonna be a little bit after the fact. It, it can't be real time. SPC was never designed to be real time. It, it, it's just, if your process does this, let me just say this one thing, your process does this. And then it does that. Okay, and you measure every single piece, then that data point is real time. But number one, I know your process doesn't do that. And number two, do you want to go to the cost of measuring every one? That's a sign that you haven't got a lot of confidence. But I'll tell you what, if your process was doing that, you'd have a heck of a lot of confidence in your process, wouldn't you? Because you'd know where it was sitting. So actually, if a process looked like that, I'd probably only measure once a day. So n none of this makes any sense. There is no such thing as real-time SPC. But by the way, SPC, pencil and a piece of paper, it is free money. If I could give any manufacturing company a piece of advice that's just so cheap, it's ridiculous, it's get a piece of paper, plot a graph, and make a bucket load of extra cash.